Well, welcome back to the SCP podcast. I am joined by Vicki Vanderveer and Michael Frisch, authors of our next installment of the consultant book series, Coaching Psychology. Joni's holding up the book and we'll flash it on the screen. Let me just say welcome to you both. We have been looking forward to interviewing and speaking with the two of you. Uh, for those watching that are already in SCP, we just got back from California about a week ago as this is being recorded. Vicki Vandiver, Dr. Vandiver gave an amazing presentation and uh, that may be available later via recording. And uh, we would just want to say welcome and we'd like for you both to spend a second and introduce yourselves to our audience. Okay, Vicki, go ahead. Um, okay, well, we, Mike and I go back a long way, so it would take too long <laughs> to, to really go over and tell you some of the great stories, but um, I'm an IO psychologist, as is Mike. We studied at different universities, but within the same city, and uh, came together in a consulting firm, Lifson, Wilson, Ferguson, Winnick, LWFW, uh, gosh, back in the 70s? We started when we were 10. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was, it, that was a consulting firm of, of IO psychologists. And, uh, and that's where, you know, we, I got started and Mike too. And, um, you know, everything else was serendipitous. When I was working at first at LWFW, I, I didn't even know what industrial psychology was until I went to work there and then decided I loved that work and uh, changed my major, my undergraduate major, finished in psychology and eventually, and then went to, to graduate school. And uh, Mike, do you want to say something about you and then we can talk about us together? Uh, sure. Well, yeah, also very traditional IO psych. Um, I was at Rice, Vicki was at U University of Houston, um, both very traditional IO psych programs. Uh, we had the advantage of being in this consulting firm from uh, really internships, uh, paid internships, but at an early early stage, learned a lot about assessments and and surveys and research and validation. We were doing a lot of validation. Um, and then we went our separate ways. I came back to my home base in New York City, worked for a number of consulting firms and also internal at PepsiCo, um, ended up at PDI running the coaching practice for the Northeast. Um, and, and since 2000, uh, been on my own, dedicated to teaching uh, executive coaching and and writing about it. Um, and this book, uh, Vicky reached out and said, "Hey, you want to write a book together about coaching psychology?" And I said, "Absolutely." So that's that's we we re we reconnected, although we always kept in touch somewhat. Yeah, we usually met at PSYOP conferences, right? Um, yeah. that's that's where we would touch. But he went off to New York to do his thing. I went on to Exxon for a one-year internship there. Then I went from there to Shell, Houston's oil industry, right? Went to Shell, had a three-year internship and stayed there five more years. So I was with Shell for eight years, loved it. That's before Royal Dutch Shell took it back over. So it was US, US company. And I was doing just everything I side, meaning test development, validation, uh, also defending uh, our, our our validity and fairness studies in in courts and in arbitrations. Um, so it was it was heavily into into statistics. Did my doctoral dissertation at Shell, and that was a field study, but a lot of statistical analysis, which I loved. And um, so I was pretty hardcore. I side we call it I the the assessment and testing and and statistics side. And uh, then AT&T broke up and the baby bells started scrambling for IO psychologists. And so I was, I was recruited by Southwestern Bell. They doubled my salary at the time to go to St. Louis. And, you know, friends of mine went to the other, to the other Bell operating companies. And that was my big opportunity there. So I headed up personal research, doing all the stuff I had been doing, hired a small group of people to redo all the tests and assessment centers and that kind of thing. 
But this was a huge, big organizational change. And the leaders of the Baby Bell operating companies now were leaders of their own standalone public company. And in a job analysis to update everything, the assessment centers for leaders and that kind of thing, it became very clear that the requirements for the operating company managers were very different from leading a public company. So the short story is that's how I got into big organizational change. And with that, some of the top leaders called me to help them. So um, that's, that's where it started. And then I got into the one-on-one. -on -one. That's how I got into one-on-one -on -one leader development. And then I saw, boy, I, I need some education and went to the Gestalt Center because I needed three CE credits by Monday. Um, to, and they had, they had a really good course there on self as instrument in the consulting relationship. And so over a weekend, I was, I was, I went in as a, probably an obnoxious IO asking all the questions about, well, how reliable and how valid is this one-on-one -on -one stuff? And, and, um, I, I came out of there chastened. <laughs> I learned I came out of there learning to listen and to hear and to accept as valid data what people say. My job is to, with them together, uh, figure out what the meaning really is, et cetera. So that was, that was the beginning. I'll stop there. It's been a long journey, but that's how it started. Well, you know, I'm really curious how come you decided to write the book? Um, you know, you're talking about your experiences and what you're up to and everything. I mean, Mike, I guess you were writing some more already, but he said that Vicki, uh, you, you were the one who came to him. So why a book on coaching psychology and why now? Rodney Lohman, as everybody I hope knows, initiated the series on um, fundamentals of consulting psychology and, and individual leader development coaching is is a part of, it's a subset of consulting psychology. Rodney came to me and said, you need to write this book. He just, you know how Rodney is. And um, I, I had not written a book before and was really afraid to do that, but he insisted. And so I said, yes, and then I got excited about it. Well, then Hurricane Harvey <laughs> came into Houston and Rockport and flooded two houses and, and time was going by and I was, I was, I guess I had PTSD and I told Rodney, I can't do this, you know, get, get someone else to do it. And uh, he said, nope, you're going to do it. And, he, and so he waited and I said, I need a co-author. I need a co-author who is expert in coaching and who is different from me that you know i really i really and and so different in i'm a i'm a myers-briggs p <laughs> so is rodney i need a i need a j i need somebody who is and and together we'll we'll get the balance right but you know with me it might it's going to be hard to get it done mike's been the perfect perfect partner he teaches coaching he has for years um and he is um He's organized and just a, a prince of a human being. And it was so good to reconnect with him after after so many years. Mike, what's your version of the story? Well, I, my version is um, uh, I was teaching and, and doing um, uh, articles and things, and I'd written a book for the course that I was teaching. Um, but you, you reached out to me and said, well, you know, Rodney wants you to write this book and, you know, you're not, not getting the traction and how about we do it together? And my, I said, absolutely, let's, let's do it. I was particularly excited by the, the concept of doing a coaching psychology book. And Vicki and I were totally aligned on this because we all, we that are close in the coaching world know that the rest of the planet uses the term coaching psychology pretty freely and you can get degrees in coaching psychology mm -hmm. uh, outside of the US but in here in the US we have these kind of silos in in psychology and there was no space for coaching um, uh, nobody really picked it up but we were totally aligned on the fact that we want 
the, the activity of coaching, particularly applied in organizational settings, mm -hmm. to be a recognized part of psychology, a recognized practice area within psychology. You, you know, does it draw from all the other areas? Absolutely. But let's let's own this label of of making coaching psychology mm -hmm. um, to, and bring those together. And so the 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 concept behind the book really grabbed me too. And um, I knew Vicky forever. So, um, and yeah, we're different kinds of people and that's all fine. And, and uh, you know, I think it was, it was great. And, and th this book was kind of our COVID baby. Yeah. In fact, it probably got done because of COVID. I remember 20 plus, more than 20 years ago, at least, at an APA convention in in Washington, D.C., I was having lunch with Carol Wasilishan, David Peterson, and somebody else. And we were asking ourselves, where is coaching in the, where is psychology in the coaching space? Because, you know, ICF had just become a coaching machine. They were a marketing organization. And we psychologists are not, you know, <laughs> We have kind of have our heads down doing what we do and uh, we, we aren't the marketing organization and they really took off and popularized it. And I had to get comfortable with that. But I said, yeah, we should at least have our place there because psychology in the workplace, that's all about human behavior. It's about performance effectiveness. It's about culture's impact on people's performance. It's about all the things that organizational psychology is about. And, um, and so I was just, Mike and I were, were really pleased to get this opportunity. Uh, there's been resistance to calling it coaching psychology in part, I think, because of the licensing requirements, if you call yourself a psychologist, but PSYOP is now working on that. So, uh, but appropriately, people need to know, I think, what it is and how it's different. By the way, you know, when I do my walking around Memorial Park and joggers pass me or slow ones, I might pass them. There are pairs of people going around the park every day. And as they pass you, you can overhear some of the conversation. People have been coaching people since time immemorial. And so anybody and everybody coaches. Parents coach their children. Children coach their parents. I, um, so anybody can serve as a coach. And so this book is to differentiate how psychology, coaching psychology can, can really help in developing leaders. Well, I noticed that the subtitle of the book too is Catalyzing Excellence in Organizational Leadership. So mm -hmm. this book really is about coaching and organizations and working with leaders and organizations. So can you tell can you tell us just a little bit more about like what is the focus of the book or what you know what are some takeaways perhaps a couple of takeaways in addition to the focus here of like when somebody would read it what would be a good a good reason for them to to want to pick it up and and, and read it well i'll give a couple then mike yeah you know catalyzing is a is a is an intentional term it is catalyzing learning. So it's not training. It's not, we don't tell people. We don't see what they need to do and tell them how and what to do. This is a process of facilitating the other person's learning. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it's it's process facilitation. So that's one takeaway, Mike. Well, well yeah. And the rest of that phrase is organizational leaders. Yes. <clears throat> so we're defining coaching psychology um, as being an organizationally based intervention. So we're not talking about life coaching or personal coaching or pet coaching or, or fitness coaching. We're not talking, those are all fine activities and they can, that can happen while you're walking around the reservoir or whatever you're doing. We're talking about coaching as an, as an intent, coaching psychology as an intentional activity to help one-on-one -on -one to help build uh, organizational leaders in their context. And there's a lot of complexity to that. You have to understand not only the psychology of the individual, but you also have to understand the psychology of the organization mm -hmm. and all the things that go along with that topic, which of course we study 
in consulting psychology and in IO psychology, all those factors of people management, leadership, communication, teamwork, the hierarchy, uh, division of labor, you know, all the activities that go on in organizations. Well, coaches can help out in that context. And that's, that's one takeaway from the book. Okay. This is not, you know, just having a nice conversation. This is a, an organizational intervention to help a leader grow. Yeah. I also found that there were a lot of really practical, I don't know if you call them tips, but uh, parts to the book. Like, for example, the, one of the differences with organizational co uh, coaching versus just like life coaching is that there's typically a sponsor uh, who's different from the person who's being coached. And so you have these different relationships and who are you, who's paying you, who are you working with and all this. And the book talks a lot about these kinds of different issues and even like some of the ethical issues that come up as well in coaching. So, yeah, really, it is complex and, and really appreciate all that you brought into that. Yeah. And uh, Vicki did a study, part of what part of what motivated Rodney to say, Vicki, you got to write this book. Because Vicky did a study in 2016, um, you know, in uh, in the consulting psych journal uh, that defined the the competencies for at that point in the, in the journal is called an executive coach. So a coach that's working in an organizational framework. Uh, Vicky did a very rigorous uh, study about that, and you can see the complexity. We have that in the book too. You can see the complexity of the skills that are needed. Nobody's going to have them all, but you, you better have most of them. I just want to say it was it was Vicki, but it was also Rodney Lohman and Ken Perlman and Joan Brannick. We, we were the four uh, co-authors that, that did that study. And um, yeah, so uh, as soon as that was published, neuroscience had, a, had like just some big breakthroughs for us. And so as soon as you write and publish something like that, there's a there's the next thing, but most of it's in there. And what we did find from the experts who participated in our study is that nobody coming out of any graduate program in psychology is fully prepared to do coaching. Clinicians and, and, and uh, counseling psychologists really need the organizational context piece because it's about the leader in their context. So all the forces on them that that have to do with how effective they are and what they need to do it's different if they go to the another organization and and they have a, a a different a different context wow so learning a lot about the organizational context is also a key piece of the coaching mm -hmm. engagement yeah and expertise in general right mm -hmm. it is and knowing the you know if you're doing it at, at the executive level if you're coaching executives you really need to know their world. You need to know what their world is about. And if you don't, they sniff you out in a minute. I mean, you'll, you won't have credibility after the first 10 words you've uttered. Um, so you have to, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's high stakes for them and for their organization and for the executive coaching psychologist or coach. Right. So some of what you speak to in the book, too, is about uh, transferring into coaching psychology from, say, a clinical background or, or counseling or something, too. There are differences there as well, uh, in addition to just coming straight out of grad school. So, um, yeah, there's a lot there. So you said, though, um, Vicki, that, of course, things change even like the day you publish the book. Right. I mean, is there anything that you would add now that we have this opportunity to talk about it or, or diff that would you do differently? Uh, from well, what probably add the neuroscience and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, some easy reads are from Richard Boyatzis um, at, at Case Western Reserve. Uh, he's written a lot on the functional magnetic imaging studies that have, that have, uh, there are a lot of other, other people too, but we know more and more about the neuroscience of, of coaching, of, of leadership and of, and of coaching. And now, of course, artificial intelligence has just exploded. And, uh, you know, and, and people are getting on the gravy train of coaching. And so some businesses have popped up that, that are, are using AI to take coaching to everybody, but they're also um 
you know, they're, they're, they're trying to, I think, do it not not just for not just for lower levels but for executives too so we need to learn all we can about that and learn how how that can help the executive coaching psychologist their ai can't replace what coaching psychologists do because all the research says that effectiveness of coaching is primarily determined by the by the quality and degree of connectedness between the coach and the and the client and so a bot can do a lot but they can't connect emotionally to the point that um that that well-trained and skilled coaching psychologists can mike would you add to that anything else you would do differently or change no that's a, that's a good list uh i i would say back to the intention of the book and the series, this is, as Vicki said earlier, this is a fundamental uh, yeah. series in consulting psychology. So it, you know, it has, the book has a lot of references and it's grounded in the literature, but, uh, but there was a lot we couldn't really dig into in the page limitations and the focus on um, really entry level coaching. Mm -hmm. um, so all these other areas, I mean, they're gonna be big topics um, and somebody will have to write about them, but it, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to be a second edition of this book. Okay. So yeah. are you writing other, other books or, or articles that we should be paying attention to or looking out for? So I'm, I'm writing this chapter on executive coaching psychology for PSYOPs professional practice handbook. And my co-author for this book is Mark Sokol. Um, so it's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful, we think treatment of executive coaching psychology at the, at the top executive levels. Pro that, that's, that's probably going to be, I, I don't know if it'll be out this year. We hope late this year it will be, but it could that's be with you and Mark. Before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that chapter is building on what Mike and I have done here. And so we're just concentrating on the executive level, executive level coaching. So uh, the first thing we describe in there is the executive's world, what that is. And so um, it's, it's, it, it builds on this, just, I think we're making sure it builds on it beautifully. So people, uh, learn how to acquire expertise. Um, so yeah, that, and, but there have to be a bunch of books being written right now. Mm -hmm. Mike, do you know of some more? I don't. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've, I've shared some white papers I've written recently. I wrote a little white paper on supervision, which is, um, or on ongoing professional development um, with a more experienced coach and how that can fit into people's um, uh, development as, as professional coaches. Um, and I, I, when I write something like that, I, I post it on, on my, um, the website that we use for our, tra our, our tra coach training program, which is called the Professional Coaching Program, which actually is just, just launching another class in a week from now. Excellent. Well, we'll be sure to have all the links up to uh, both of you and how people can reach you on our notes, on our show notes, because I'm sure you'll get inquiries after this uh, episode here. Um, but let me ask you one final question, and that is, um, were there any opportunities from writing the book that, that surprised you or came up uh, that maybe you weren't expecting or or anything that, that was a, like a bonus in addition to having a book? an actual book out there for people to, to read and, and absorb. Well, it was very gratifying when the book came out right when APA was happening. Vicki was actually at APA. I was with Joni. On yeah, a I saw panel. it there. Yeah. And then, I was and then, the only one in the room that hadn't received the book yet. <laughs> Joni yeah. loaned me. I had hands. it, yeah. Somehow I... I pre-ordered uh, pre it and got it first. That's so funny. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't there, but I got a lot of emails from friends and colleagues uh, congratulating, hey, it's out. Yeah, I didn't have it either. I didn't seen it either. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, you know, why, why do you write a book? There's, you certainly don't do it for the money. 
um, is because there's none there. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I like to write. I've written other things, uh, but I, no, there's no um, there's credibility that goes with writing a book and having it out there um, and notoriety, and that's kind of fun. Um, uh, but yeah, no, no, no direct benefit. You know, one, one thing, one benefit that I experienced was it, it actually was at APA when we were, we were, we were doing that blitz presentation on, on the fundamental series, the new books that had come out, you, Ross Blankenship, me and Rodney, Rodney put that together and the room was pretty full. People were interested in that. But what I felt was, wow, and looking at all the titles of the fundamentals of consulting psychology and these experts like Joni, like Skip Leonard, Dick Hilberg, you know, um, that, we, that we contributed to this amazing series that Rodney has put together. Uh, it, it kind of just gave me goosebumps to think, gosh, that for us to have to be contributing to this, it's major. It's a whole series on what consulting psychology is. And, um, you know, I thought now Rodney needs to go the next level and maybe do an advanced, mm -hmm. advanced consulting psychology. But he sure has laid a beautiful groundwork for consulting psychology for years to come. Or, or it becomes a degree program. Yeah, that's what he's hoping. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Get a degree yeah. in consulting psych. Uh, yeah. No, it is it is exciting to be part of something greater than, you know, the sum of its parts, right? The whole series together is, it's it's a um, great experience to be a part of that and to see the, the people who are involved. It's very impressive. It really is. And kudos to you, Joni, for putting uh, for putting this podcast series together to inform the world. You know, I'm I'm technologically what do you call it? Uh, I, I'm skilled enough to do what yeah. I do every day, but I couldn't have done this. I wouldn't know the first place to start. And uh, and this is just wonderful to be able to let people know um, let, about all these about all these books in Rodney series. Yeah. Well, you know, it's so funny you mentioned that because Nick uh, is also uh, instrumental in putting this together. And we, ironically, he's been having tech problems, not that he can't solve them, I but it's an internet I problem right today. Now. I don't know what's going on with, with his service, but uh, so he had to step out. But uh, we're still having a good time. And uh, yeah. yeah. So, well, I, uh, both Nick and I really want to thank you both for being on this podcast. And I think we've learned a lot about you uh, and about the book uh, and about what coaching psychology really is and why it's uh, important if you're going to work in organizations to read this book. So thank you both, Mike and Vicki, for sharing your time with us today. Thank Happy you. To